All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bits of the Backline, your local Omaha comedy podcast that examines the origins and development of comedy bits. To my right here, I have Caleb Jones. Uh, he is uh, the light of the MA program at Creighton University. This kid is <laughs> Thanks. bleeding potential. Uh, <laughs> say hi for everybody, Caleb. Hey, everyone. How's it going? You know, just over here, bleeding potential. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All my students ble- bleed potential. That's mm-hmm. how I... <laughs> that's normal. That's yeah. normal for MA students. I, you know, that's, that's how it goes. It's, uh, it, it is a trial of suffering, uh, I think, exactly. graduate school. Yeah. We have a special guest with us here today. Uh, the one, the only YouTuber, TEDx <laughs> talker, comedy doer, Cameron Logsdon. Oh, yes. wow. What an intro. I will say I'm not the one and only. My son's name is also, also Cameron, Cameron Logsdon. And such a sham. <laughs> I was What a big mistake. I created my own replacement. <laughs> Um, wow. But no, thank you for having me here. I'm happy to hang out. Uh, we're yeah. happy to have the one of two Cameron Logs <laughs> in, in Omaha. There I you mean, go. Yeah. You gotta go with like the elder or the greater, you yeah. know? Yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah. yeah. Senior. First edition. That's yeah. I mean. grad the original, student, right? The original. Yeah. yeah, of course. Well, uh, thanks for being with us today. This is, this is pretty exciting for us. We've been wanting to do this for a while. Really happy we could get you on uh, for the show. I mean, I was, uh, uh, Josh and I were actually yesterday in the office going through some of your YouTube content. Um, I saw your show on Wednesday. Uh, I thought that was fantastic. Um, so uh, when I was going through, I just want to jump right in with some yeah. of your YouTube stuff because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very impressed, um, to be honest with you. Uh, the editing, the quality of the content, um, I thought it was hilarious, really. I thought yeah. it was fantastic. Um, I wanted to ask you some questions about... Uh, those processes and how you make um, some of that content that you do on YouTube. Yeah, um, yeah. Specifically, uh, do you edit, you know, that stuff yourself? Are you constructing all that? Are you formulating those ideas? Just tell me a little bit about, yeah, about so, that. Yeah, so my stuff on YouTube is, it's all it's all my stuff. I edit it in a little mm-hmm. hole in my basement nice. um, on my laptop. Uh, Fantastic. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like, a, I'm not great at editing. Like I, I, I take a lot of shortcuts. Um, and so I'm basically, uh, you know, I, you probably saw I do impressions on yes, YouTube, yeah, right? Some very good impressions. Right. On my <laughs> I would say, I would say that I'm also doing an impression of somebody that knows how to edit videos. <laughs> like I'm not, like I'm not really, like I, I shortcut most everything through iMovie yeah. or Smart, some variation hard. of yeah. Yeah, <laughs> iPhone apps. And I'm like, okay, if I just, how do I create a PNG? Exactly. You know? yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no, no, no. So I edit everything and, and I write my, my own stuff for you know youtube and everything and yeah i usually have to film it myself there's y- mm-hmm. you are very lucky to have each other is what <laughs> I, i'm saying i know I've man been through Dude. this process yeah <laughs> I've, sometimes I've, it is lonely <laughs> oh for sure i've i've been there man i've done that filming by yourself i know it's yeah. tough but i think the quality speaks for itself honestly like you know as hacky as you have to get to to do it you know that's yeah. that's what matters man you get it done yeah i appreciate um, that thank you yes absolutely um so I think the thing, you know, about YouTube is that it's definitely a different environment, I would say, or, you know, it seems like it, you know, to me. Um, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about how, like, you know, when you're formulating something, you know, for the internet, you know, for example, like, is that different than your approach, you know, that you would take when you're trying to write stand up or trying to do something, you know, in, in person? Like, does that feel different? Does it, does it work differently for you? Yeah, I think I think it's real different, but I, there are a lot of things that are the same. You know, um, comedy is is comedy, and I think comedy, like a lot of writing, it's like how do you connect your message to your audience? I guess is is yeah. the bottom line for all of it. You know, exactly. and so yeah, totally. mm-hmm. and so to me, it's always a good practice in like adapting that skill of trying to connect to an audience to different environments. You know, right. so. You know, doing something on YouTube is, um, you just have to remember that people don't have uh, the attention span. I think I do a lot of things on YouTube that I think are going to be broader, and I, I probably spend more time in stand-up, like, talking specifically about myself. Right, right. You know, uh, um, yeah. and, and, and things like that, whereas, like, the internet is... I, I do things that I think wouldn't work on stage, but that maybe yeah. I had an idea for. And so I'm like yes. constantly thinking of ideas. And usually one of the first thoughts I have is, okay, I like this idea. Is it a, is it a, is it a stand-up bit or yeah. is it a video or is it like a sketch that I need to like 
really do on that. stage or something, you know, yeah. like what is the best way to put this out? And so, mm-hmm. um, I just like doing everything, you know, yeah. it's kind of the biggest thing. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm just like a very, uh, I'm very interested. I want to mm. get involved. I want to participate in everything. And, yeah. um, and so I just want to try all the different ways of doing it. And so yeah. I'm very scatterbrained in terms of like the stuff I'll make. You yeah, know? yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I think, I think that's a huge part of like, I think just going for it, being interested and like trying new things. Cause you, you know, I think you, you learn new things too. That's the exciting thing for me as well. You know, you just kind yeah. of like yes. learn how to do this stuff and it's great. Speaking yeah. of, you know, those, the videos as well, something I was struck by was, it seemed to me that there was like a, a very um, purposeful like cadence and rhythm to everything. Like, you know, the jokes kind of line up, you edit things to kind of cut just mm-hmm. at the right moment to make sure the laugh kind of like, yeah. you know, is, is punchy and is there. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about like, when you're, when you're thinking of that, you know, rhythm and when you're trying to like think, okay, is this timing work? Does it work? Is it, is it like that with stand up too? Is, is it a similar thing? Are you thinking of beats? Are you thinking of rhythm or yeah, yeah. how does that work for you? Yeah, I think it's really similar. You know, it's, it's funny. I spent a lot of time. So obviously during the pandemic, it was, you know, you couldn't go out or perform anywhere and yeah. Yeah. Um, it was really tough. And so I created a lot of like, uh, really sh- like a lot of shorter videos and stuff mm-hmm. that I threw up on like TikTok, TikTok or whatever. Right. I saw know? some of those yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I put some stuff on there, but I, I learned quickly that like, and I had been doing it the whole time, but I didn't maybe, I didn't maybe like realize what it was, but like a lot of times where you see people do a jump cut, like, you know, yeah. YouTube's a real jump cutty and sometimes mm-hmm. it gets very annoying, you yeah. know, <laughs> fast. and I totally hit them get fast, it. you know, yeah. But I realized like if you're posting a, a video that like may have otherwise been a stand up, you know, if it was something you were performing live, mm-hmm. anywhere where a jump cut might go, that's yeah. where you would expect a laugh. Yeah. So yeah. where you're not, so point. like, in stand up, you have a punchline and then the laughter creates a jump cut for you. Like it's just mm-hmm. basically like breaks up the sentence, wow. you know, yeah. it breaks up the yeah, next thing. So like in, in a YouTube video, if you're doing something, it'll be, you just put the jump cut cause you're like, okay, I want to break people's attention here and mm-hmm. reset them, which is what laughter does. But in a jump cut, it does the same thing. So mm-hmm. I used to like be really annoyed. Like what, before I like started making YouTube videos and stuff, I was like, I just, this is so like, ah, oh, it's so fat, you know? Mm-hmm. But like now that I watch it, I'm like, oh, the people that have been doing this have known this a lot yeah. longer than I have. Mm-hmm. Like every time you do a jump cut, it resets people's attention. Right. And sometimes you need to do it because you're doing something long, like it's a long sentence or something like you're really dealing in like syllables mm-hmm. when you're making certain types of YouTube videos, especially these people that are, you know, crushing it on short form, like Instagram or TikTok or exactly. YouTube, like, you know, they're breaking up syllables. I mean, they're really particular. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just learned, you know, that the rhythm and the, the timing of it, um, if you have time, I think that if you look at anybody that edits their own videos in mm-hmm. terms of things like there's good timing built into the videos. And a lot of yeah. times it's difficult for people to take that timing and do it on stage afterwards. Yeah. Yes. Like a, a lot point. of standups don't like YouTubers that like come yeah. out and do stand up because they're like, <laughs> like, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but I yeah. think the reverse is true. I think that if you were to ask any stand up to um, edit, Mm-hmm. their own stuff I think they would be able to look at it and be like oh I know where I this, know should, where be. this should go because yeah. the timing you learn on stage is easier translated to to the uh to the internet I think the reverse can be more difficult because stage presence is like its own whole you know yeah <laughs> it's a it's world a craft of study of itself yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure but man. but the, but you're absolutely right like the timing and rhythm thing like if you can figure it out one place i, I do think it's easier to understand to it apply to something yeah, else yeah, yeah. yeah i mean sure. omaha explained for example you know yeah. it's a, a great video um but you. you know two minutes 23 seconds probably yeah but like it feels substantial you know that that was something too like there's yeah. there's content it's packed full of like you're saying a lot in, in two minutes and 23 seconds. And I think that's a testament to the, to what you're saying, you know, to the craft and that timing for sure. Yeah. Before I filmed that video, I, so I wrote, the, I had the idea and I wrote that one really fast. Like mm. I was like, Oh, I have this idea. This Got could it. be great. It took me like maybe 30 minutes to write. Like it was like really Cause it was just, it's, it's Omaha stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it was yeah. Easy, I mean, you yeah. know, it's just, it's, it's just jokes. Um, and so it was like really easy to write, uh, but I wanted to make sure that like it was going to connect. So before Mm -hmm. I filmed it by myself, uh, which I did, I just set up a camera and filmed it alone for it. Yeah. Um, 
but I uh, I brought it on this stage. Actually, it was the really? first place anybody heard it. I did it here at an oh, open wow. mic, um, mm. and I knew that it needed to be short. Uh, and mm. so I, I think the open mic even then was only four minutes, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And so I think I probably got it done a little bit over four minutes. Mm. Um, I went a little bit over and somebody who was ever was running the soundboard that night yeah. would like, let it's me like, go over a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're yeah, like, he's yeah, trying he's to, you know, let he's him, doing it. let yeah. him try the thing, you know, Give him a few extra uh, seconds. but yeah, <laughs> I totally read it on stage first mm -hmm. and i and was able to hear people laugh at it yeah, and yeah. then that informed very much like mm -hmm. what I could or couldn't pull off in the video and so I don't remember if there were at this at this point I don't remember if there were lines that got cut or if there were mm -hmm. things that like I was like oh I need to add something here you know yeah. but I definitely took it on this stage and I think I I read it um at the time we were filming Omaha Live um mm. and so I read it for we used to have a test audience come in when we would do monologue jokes for Nebraska news, which was oh. just like, you know, it's like weekend update, but for Nebraska, yeah, yeah. it was real oh, hacky. That's, that's we we had fun, but you know, it was what it was. I love that. I love but, that. Uh, but we used to have like, um, like maybe 12 or 15 people come in, um, mm. on Tuesday nights or something to, to listen to us do those jokes. And so I read it once there also. So I read it a yeah. couple times out loud for like a live audience to like hear where people were laughing some, yeah, yeah. or weren't laughing. Exactly. And then that helped make the video. And there've only been a couple of the times where I've tried to do that for like other videos I've done. But um, any video I've made for the internet that I've read out loud on stage for somebody first mm -hmm. is almost always funnier because I know whether or not it works. Like exactly. If yeah. you're putting something up on the internet, you can put the jump cuts in and just hope that just people hope are going to laugh, but you don't yeah. know for sure. And so it'll always mm -hmm. go through a better revision process if people hear it first. And that's just yeah. true of probably any kind of revision process, right? It's like run your ideas by somebody before you send yourself, you know, um, yeah. like an insane person <laughs> into the void. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> You're like uh, speaking to the choir. I, I, <laughs> I gotta have you talk for my students or show this in front of them or something <laughs> like that. Like, yeah, read it aloud to a friend, you know? Yeah, if it yeah. sounds weird to them, that's a good sign that you got some work to do. Revise, revise, revise. Yeah, revise, I mean, learn. that's what it is. Like, it's like, write it, read it to yourself, rewrite it, read it out loud to yourself, because yeah. then you're going to catch, like, the first 10% so of mistakes. Yeah. Then read it out loud for a friend. Then read it out loud for a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> then revise again. Then redo that whole what's, process. Yeah. yeah, yeah what's yeah. the old saying? It's like 90% uh, of writing is rewriting what you've already rewritten. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that's absolutely. so true. Like, yeah. and, and <laughs> it makes I think, a lot of sense. Yeah, for sure. And I think making, you know, videos and doing that it is a form of writing. It's just, it's a different kind yeah. of, like, function, you know, but it's... I think there's a lot of similarities for sure. I definitely so. think so. You know, like I said, I like to do all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I, um, so I, I just made, <laughs> I just made a, I just made a mixtape. Yeah, mix I heard about out. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love the breakfast food, uh, emphasis on the mix. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan. So heck yeah. <laughs> it's on Spotify and Apple music. There you today. go. Yeah. Shout it so, out. Yeah. Today. <laughs> yeah nice. today. So that would uh, be, hell, but, hell yeah. but like from, like writing like that, writing stand up, writing sketches, uh, all of that came from like a background. I, you know, I coached speech. I did a lot of like, right. you know, like pu competitive public speaking and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah I coached yeah. and did a lot of that for many mm -hmm. years. And all of public speaking background is like connect with your audience and mm -hmm. fit within whatever, you know, a, a, apply your skills to whatever medium you're doing you yes, know yeah and prior to doing all of that like i used to do slam poetry Dude, yeah. slam yeah i did a lot of slam and uh but i learned that like whether you're writing persuasive speeches or whether you're writing poetry mm -hmm. or you're writing prose yeah. or you're writing a mixtape about breakfast or a <laughs> yeah, tiktok dude, yeah. or stand up <laughs> like the skills are all the same. And mm -hmm. I really believe that like, if you can learn that writing, revise, 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 like if you can learn mm -hmm. that, and if you can learn to like pay attention to the medium and be like, how does, why does this work better for what audience? Yes. And then yeah. deciding, okay, I've got an idea, but is it a better short story? Is it a or better is it a, yeah. tweet? Is exactly. it, you know, is like where better, does it fit best? And mm -hmm. then if you can make that decision, um, and, and I'm not saying I do this, better than anybody but there are people that i think have figured out oh mm -hmm. this works in this area this works in this area and they do it and and that's when people uh really succeed but but yeah. i but i also believe that um 
you know, I think that if you can, if you can do any of those, if you can succeed in any one of those areas, I think you're more likely to be able to succeed in any of the others as long as you open up the window to mm -hmm. the idea that like the skills are the same. Yeah, exactly. So it's just reapplying the skills. It you seems know? like the locus of imagination is always in that intersection between people. Oh uh, yeah. That live audience is really important. Um, yes. yes. Would it be okay if we, if we played uh, a bit that uh, you composed <laughs> Speaking and, of a right, yeah. and revised for <laughs> yeah. an audience uh, sure. on Wednesday here at the backlet? Yeah. All right. That's the first time anybody's ever brought me up to a show like, hey, this next guy's not funny, uh, but he's very interesting. You know, he's got an interesting, an interesting life. Uh, hey, everybody, my name is Cameron. Uh, I'm from Nebraska. Yeah. When I travel, I tell people that. It really throws them through a cornhole, you know. Uh, I think it's because I have a skin tone that's the same color as you know, probable cause, right? Um, people always ask me, like, so, so what did you, you like, yeah, yeah, you grew up on a farm? Like, what? No, okay, I didn't, I didn't grow up on a farm, right? Like in the summer, I worked on a farm. Uh, I grew up in poverty. It's, it's very different, you know? I think, I don't know what they expect. They expect me to look like, uh, like you, I guess, or <laughs> maybe you, uh, you, you know, you know what I mean, you know. Um, <laughs> People don't know things about us, right? Like I tell them, we're really, like they don't know like where we are, for example. I tell them we're really easy to find. Uh, we're just south of the Dakotas and just west of the Iowa caucuses, right? Uh, they don't know things about us, like that we have a state-sponsored religion, you know? It's, uh, this is the Cornhuskers, right? Like I don't know what a Cornhusker is exactly, right? But I know that we pray to them on Saturdays, okay? And those prayers usually go unanswered, you know? It's like a lot of religions in that way, I guess. Um, I got a lot of questions here growing up too because I'm, you know, uh, tinted, right? A question I got a lot growing up was, uh, what, what are you? I don't, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm a Costco member. No, uh, <laughs> no, 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 like, like where are you from? Oh yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm from Omaha. Mm, but like, like, where's your family from? Oh, yeah, sorry, I misunderstood the question. Uh, they're from Omaha. <laughs> no, 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 like, 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 where are they from originally? Oh, okay. you mean because I'm brown, I can't originally be from here because you killed all of those. <laughs> now watch the little buttholes just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, nah, man, you know, it's, it is, what you, I got a lot of, you know, and it is, it just is what it is, you know, people didn't know, they don't know how to contextualize, like, what kind of brown I was, you know, so they always try to use Disney, right, so, so what are you, you're like a, you're like a, uh, you're like a, you're like a Pocahontas then? Um, n no, I'm not like a, I don't feel like you should say it that way, um, <laughs> I'm not like, no. Oh, so what are you? Oh, you're a Mulan. Yeah, clearly, clearly, you're, you're like a Mulan then, right? No, I'm, I'm not like a Mulan. So what, like an Aladdin? No, I'm not like an Aladdin. Well, shit, man, those are the options. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, but no, I, it's, you know, it is, I'm a lot of different things mixed up. I'm very mixed, right? Like, I'm basically what all of your grandchildren are going to look like, you know? <laughs> Just like some variation of Bruno Mars, right? <laughs> Uh, but I'm mostly Pacific Islander, but not Hawaiian, okay? So it's cool, but it's not the coolest, right? It's like being rich, but because your parents died, you know? Um, <laughs> the Batman thing to it, I guess. Um, <laughs> no, uh, so my, my father is from the Federated States of Micronesia, okay? It's this small set of islands. Like, it's very small. It's so small, like, you ever, like, if you like try to, on Google Maps, if you just try to zoom in like into the ocean further and further, at a certain point Google Maps is gonna be like, dude, where are you going? You know? <laughs> like it's very, it's a very tiny set of islands. Like you know you go to a restaurant and you put a, like you could put a pin in a map to show where you're from, right? Like he could never do that because if he did, uh, he'd kill all the people on the island. <laughs> just, ah! you know, like you just get them, right? Uh, and, and I struggled most of my life like claiming to be Micronesian, you know, like I was always afraid it was too easy to make fun of. I, could, I couldn't be a fifth grader that started getting called like Micropesian. Like there's no way, 
There's no way I would have been able to handle that, you know? And, like, it was difficult. Like, there were no famous Polynesians when I was growing up. You know what I mean? There's no famous Micronesian. Like, I'm probably the most famous Micronesian. <laughs> and that's because I got, like, 10 connections on LinkedIn. Like, the bar is low, you know? And, like, my black friends and my white friends, they all had heroes and icons, celebrities, and people they could look up. They had some people that were both black and white, you know, like Michael Jackson or, or Bill Clinton, you know? Um, <laughs> I didn't have that, you know, like there were no famous Polynesians. And now, now there are, but there's only two. Like we got two of them, right? It's Dwayne Johnson and Jason Momoa, okay? That is The Rock and Aquaman. And that is unfair. <laughs> that is an unreasonable expectation for an entire people. Imagine if the only two famous white people were the Terminator and Thor, right? Like, here are the two most chiseled men that have ever been carved out of marble and then pulled from the lost city of Atlantis. And I got to point to them and be like, like that, but uh, shorter and squishier, you know? <laughs> it's not fair. Like, and don't get me wrong. Like, I got a decent build, you know? Like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm built like a rope bridge, you know? Like, I'm sturdy, right? Uh, but I'm also real wobbly in the middle, okay? <laughs> it's just not a reasonable thing. And, and here's the thing. When I, like I said, we had all the different Disney things. And I wouldn't have Moana. Like, I couldn't just break into a, the rock song and be like, I've been standing at the edge of the cornfield like it didn't work <laughs> the same way. I was wondering if I could ask you a bit about um, the bit itself uh, or the series of stories that you told. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of talked a little bit earlier about the uh, importance of rhythm and cadence. Mm -hmm. That's certainly something that's earned. Like that's very much like a system of delivery that you develop over time through open mics and mm -hmm. doing showcases and that kind of thing. Um, and I noticed there was a there was this way that you used jokes as a punctuation um, to deal with pretty tough stuff. I mean, pretty like pretty tough like personal stuff. You know, like growing yeah. up uh, feeling maybe a bit lost or not knowing kind of where you were in this, in this place where people are at once, uh, you know, unconsciously racist, sometimes overtly racist, the product of de facto segregation, uh, and also besieged by white guilt, uh, and white privilege. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, uh, a, uh, a, a whole conglomeration of kind of, uh, I guess, uh, complexes. So, when you were uh, when you were delivering your set, there was this this punch that you delivered about probable cause, and then and then you kind of develop the narrative of growing up, uh, and in doing that, you're kind of like mapping that experience of fearing the police for people in a way that is relatable. You're bringing in. Disney movies in order to map their own racism and display it back to them in a way that makes them think, of course, but is also, in a sense, to some degree, maybe uh, non-threatening. Um, yeah. So I, I guess I'm curious about the way that that story developed in particular and the way that you decided to punctuate that uh, in order to make it, you know, Funny, of course, uh, but also um, worth the consideration of an audience that is, you know, probably grown up here, yeah. uh, probably, you know, 50% uh, at least white um, yeah. and may not be examining their own biases on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so this is I this want to is clap the, for him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the heavy Sorry. part of the, of the yeah. podcast. Big questions for sure. Um, yeah, I will say that's um that's that's the most accurate uh kind of um dissection of that this string of jokes that like I've ever heard and I've tried to dissect it myself. Mm. Uh <laughs> but right. I will I will say like to me the the part I would start with in that is like yeah, so I know that like the majority of the time I'm performing here or like at least in town, I'm almost always performing at the funny bone or mm -hmm. here. Right. And the audiences here, the audience can be more diverse, but especially when I'm performing out West, mm -hmm. 
It's 180th and Dodge, West Omaha, which is predominantly white. It's affluent. Um, the people that come there aren't necessarily artsy. They're like, I've never been to a comedy, right. you know, first time. At and the so, and so I often like, I look at the audience and I know like, okay, these, these folks are like, we probably don't agree on a lot of different things, sure. you know, Yeah. but we've lived in the same world, but we've experienced it very differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. And so like, I put stuff in like that because, um, like I start off with a joke that is to me it's it's kind of cliche like the where are you where are you from mm -hmm. thing like that's kind of a cliche example for anybody that is that looks like me or has an has an experience like me and it, and even though it's cliche it works for me in two ways because at the end of a show it's very common for somebody somebody that like you know like I said is nebulously brown or whatever to come up to me and be like that I lived that like that is yeah, my well, life well. thank you know that's what's yeah. up like that is you know so that's always reassuring because it's like I wish I had heard more jokes like that exactly. when I was younger yeah, well. um, and on the other side to me it's a joke that puts the audience that's usually listening to me into the joke without like blatantly attacking them mm -hmm. I think that people have a lot of different philosophies on like how you know, comedy should or shouldn't criticize, um, their, their own audience. And, yeah. you know, there's some people that are really great at just like coming on stage and being like, shut up, you know, like yeah. everybody listen and you're wrong and I'm you feel, it, you know, yeah. um, and I know enough about myself to know that I don't have that demeanor, you know? Sure, and I yeah. also know that like, I will probably gain more inroads by saying something that makes people go, Oh, I should, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm uh, learning. I've learned now without mm -hmm. you having to tell me I was wrong, right. which I've learned from enough conversations of enough uncomfortable conversations. I've learned that like just telling somebody that they're wrong, right. uh, isn't going to get them to change their mind. Yeah. But this joke, I hope makes people come to that conclusion on their own. They go, Oh, I shouldn't probably mm. do that. Anymore. Yeah. You know? Yes. Uh, and so they, that's like, to me, where it starts, right? And mm -hmm. so it, it opens up people to thinking, oh, this person has a different experience of mine, but we're meeting where we've both been. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the voice of the person saying, where are you really from? Like, that's anybody, yes. you know, that's yeah. anybody that's, you know, and it's not always even necessarily that specific thing, but I think that it's enough of a broad example that it leads people to be thinking about themselves and seeing themselves in it, mm -hmm. but then seeing themselves in it in a critical way where they no longer want to identify with that type yeah, they of person. They don't want to be that person. They, they don't, don't want to be, be that yeah. person, so they won't be that person exactly. anymore. Hopefully. Hopefully. This is my most wishful thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have a lot of faith that it works all the time, but I do mm -hmm. think that there, I've had enough times where people come up to me and say things or they're like, uh, you know, oh, I never, you know, I never thought I didn't think it. about that. I yeah. also had somebody come up to me once after a show in Missouri, though, and go, you know, you, you and that other film. I was performing with a dude uh, and he was Mexican and he was opening and after the show, the dude comes up to me and goes, you know, you guys are talking about like, you know, you're Mexican or, uh, 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 you know, from an island or what? He's like, I just want you to know, I don't see that, man. <laughs> you know, like, I don't, I don't see, that's not, you know, oh, don't, you no. don't got to be so hard on yourself. I was like, well, you don't, well, we are. Like, you don't, like, you don't I mean, like, I under, are you being nice? I can't tell us here. That's... He was trying to be sweet, but like, you know, but that you have to understand, like people are coming at it from all different levels of experience. Right. And I have very detailed and rich and thoughtful experience with this, mm -hmm. as does any person of color. Right. You know, like we all have lived this our entire lives and we know it so well mm -hmm. that like there are times where I'm like, oh, that's kind of like, where are you from? Like, that's kind of a cliche go-to example. But it's mm -hmm. also really relatable and grounding. And for people that have never thought about that experience critically, it might create inroads for them exactly. to think about it in a new way it opens up an, an opportunity for that and yeah, yeah yeah i mean you know your video i watched your video on redlining you know yes, in omaha yeah. um your your tedx talk too a different sort of subject but yeah. just as meaningful and just as you know important um i'm struck by how you know you're able to incorporate really important and meaningful conversations in you know your comedy and in your your videos and i think what what do you think is the power that that resides in that do you think there's power in in like laughter and how it applies to these subjects like these these 
I mean, very important conversations. Yeah. I mean, do you see it in when you're performing? Are you like, hey, that's that's working, or what do you see? Um, yeah, yeah, I think it can. I think for anybody, it can. You know, uh, to me, there's no difference between comedy and the Sarah McLaughlin sad dog donate your money right. on the Angel <laughs> video. Excellent. Right? Yeah. It's all yeah. it's all an emotional appeal. That's you that's know? a good point. Yeah. And so if you can get people to invest emotionally in something they lower their defenses in a way that they might be again invited to a conversation where mm -hmm. they can either learn or participate or engage or maybe it's just a way for me to share my experience without uh without just absolutely turning people off yeah you know and and again this is just my way of doing it and, and a lot of people might say a lot of you know smarter and, and talented and braver and better comedians might say to me you know like you don't have to like get them to like you in order sure, for them to learn yeah. from you. You could just tell them like they don't deserve yeah. that patience from you. Mm -hmm. But I'm also super Midwestern <laughs> and I also yeah. know, I also know that like everybody has a different approach. And my approach is how can I get you emotionally invested in what's happening mm -hmm. and then hopefully have a conversation with you. And I'm willing to invite that conversation. Right. Uh, but you know, we, you have to start somewhere. And so for yeah. me, sometimes that's comedy, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I've never created anything that I think, it, that I don't think I've ever created anything that it will enact like a great amount of change. Sure, I think, yeah. I, th I don't I don't necessarily agree with people that are ever like, um, comedians are the, you know, the new philosophers yes. or whatever, you know. Salvation. I don't believe, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that, but I do buy that like, uh, comedy could be an invitation to people starting themselves on a path of learning or discovery. Cause that's what it was mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. You know, like I heard jokes when I was a kid, you know, Chris Rock might tell a joke about racism when I was a kid yeah. that like Chris Rock didn't teach me about race. Like I experienced racism. Yeah. Chris Rock might put into context the, what the, the, the history of the experience, you know, in mm -hmm. some way. Yes. Um, and then that just, piqued my interest in, in things like understanding um, and looking at race in a critical way or looking at, uh, you know, um, social structures in a critical way. You know, there might be different comedians that look at class or something like that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, there are really great comedians that women that have made jokes that I think for me were like, they invited me to the conversation that says, oh, this might be cool to learn about. Or like, yeah, I yeah. hadn't thought about it that way. Like I should think about things in a new way. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if an article came across my, you know, if, if somebody, if another conversation came across my way or an article came across my way or, or, a, or something that had deeper, more thoughtful conversation about something like, let's say feminism sure. came across my desk after I had heard a joke that made feminism to me, which like, again, I'm a, I'm a straight dude who grew up in a very masculine world, you sure, know? Yeah. And so, but when, when somebody makes a joke about, you know, masculinity or, or, fem, or, or feminism or something like that to me, it was like, oh, this like introduce, like this was my yeah. introduction, right. you know? Yeah. And might, might read that article. Then that you, that yeah. opens me up to it, and so I hope that like I can do the same thing for people. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not gonna, you know, we made a we made, um, you know, I might have a joke in the Omaha video, for example, yeah, about, yeah. you know, um, uh, kind of the unwritten rules of segregation in our city. That's exactly. true of most cities. Yes, yeah. And there's a history behind all of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if somebody heard the joke, they might be like, oh, that's a joke. That's funny. I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. But then they might think about it more critically and they go somewhere. So when people yeah. say the comedians are the modern philosophers, I always, <laughs> I always think that's just so, it, it's so pretentious. And comedians, <laughs> just by our sheer nature, the idea that we ever think we deserve like 10 minutes of uninterrupted time on a mic is, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, let's not get There's ahead of all ourselves. all sorts of stuff about We that. are who we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. we're performers, you know, but it's okay yeah. to be a performer as mm -hmm. long as you know you. You, you do with that and people could do whatever they want with it. Yeah. But I think that the, what often is the case is there are actual philosophers, there are actual writers, there are actual academics such as yourselves that are doing, <laughs> that's generous. Thank doing you. these, <laughs> these <laughs> you're really giving us a lot of credit. <laughs> doing these, <laughs> the, the thoughtful and researched and hard work of anything that, that says, 
you know, that somebody can go back and look to. So I do think like, you know, everybody talks about Dave Chappelle being all these wonderful things. And Dave Chappelle has his, his, his he's an amazing comedian and he's yeah, a yeah. great speaker. Yes, uh, but there's nothing that Dave Chappelle hasn't said in a two line joke that mm-hmm. isn't probably better articulated in way more depth from an MA or a PhD student sure, somewhere yeah, writing very doing, thoughtfully about it. I don't know. I, I would actually, I can <laughs> test that point a little bit because I, I was, you know, uh, I was in that world. Why did I just say that? Like I've been fired or something. <laughs> <laughs> Still a professor, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I haven't been around for a while. Uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, but the, I, I do, um, there's this, like, the, there's a side of performance that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the ecumenical approach that supplements understanding it at various levels, right? Mm-hmm. And I actually, I think that, yeah. I think as a performer, I think that you are going to touch so many more people's lives. I mean, to, for context, you know, and I, I have a, a colleague in the room, uh, we, we work very hard on, uh, you know, on writing scholarly articles, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, if you got 10, 10 downloads, um, oh, yeah. from that's gold uh, research. <laughs> yeah. Honest to God, you're, yeah, like, the, that's a hit article. I mean, yeah. I think the, the one from our, the, one of the major journals in our, in our field that, uh, that was like a, a lauded, well circulated, read among graduate student classes and undergrads, et cetera. I think it had like a hundred downloads in a year and you can rack that up in, in an hour, five minutes, maybe, yeah. you know? Uh, so yeah, yeah. there is, um, there's a degree to which, I mean, Franz Fanon, of course, uh, we need these these folks to be articulating the possible futures of our uh, our common wealth or our common you know earth. Uh, but uh, you know, man, it, it goes nowhere without people like you. Yeah. Well, I I don't know about people like me, but people <laughs> people like I want to be like people like that, and so that's my goal is to yeah. be somebody that does that. But I also think though that like. I mean, that's all audience, right? Like, it's like, yes, the joke will hit more, will connect with more people. I mean, think about like over the course of the pandemic and the protests Mm -hmm. and the Me Too movement, like an Instagram, uh, uh, what is it I'm talking about? Like, where it's just words on a picture, uh, not a, not a meme. I know what a meme, but but, uh, (laughs) what am I thinking of? Like, uh. There's like a word for it. It's a, like a word picture. Word picture. Yeah, that'll I don't work. Know. I mean, hey, the, we know what the, you're talking about. The, the, <laughs> but basically, like oh, infographic. That's infographic. what I'm talking about. Oh yes. my gosh. There yeah, goes. thank you. Yeah. All right. I like so, word like, picture. Infographics <laughs> have educated, in my opinion, like a generation of people, mm-hmm. ah. right? Ah. The problem can be, though, that like if comedians or t- people that tweet or, or poets or whatever, if they're not rooting those infographics in something deeper, mm-hmm. then you can run into a problem because because those aren't informed, you know? Uh, so I do think huh. there's a, I do think that if comedians want to consider themselves the, the modern philosophers, they just have to have a responsibility to have thought thoroughly about like mm-hmm. what it is that they're saying and whether or not something they're saying is rooted in a truth yeah. or if they're just saying, you know, and, and then, stuff up, yeah. and then it's up to an audience to be able to suss out like, what is the difference between something that's just funny, whether it's something that is like critical and grounded in something. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you know, again, like if I'm making a joke about, um, uh, you know, growing up as a minority in Nebraska, mm-hmm. people of color here are going to get it. Like, I don't need to break it down yeah, for them. Yeah. You know, they yeah. lived it, you know, but white people, they hear the joke, they might be like, oh, I don't understand that. And yeah. I probably need to learn more. And then maybe one day they will, or they'll be more open to it. Or when more comedians make jokes like that, or they see a tweet about it, or an infographic about it, or they hear a song about it. And then, you know, um, then those conversations just open. So to me, it's all just a part of being your own voice, your own, you're your own medium in, in a, hopefully a world that is all trying to do it. But I, yeah. I also just very much believe that like, there's always somebody who said it, with way more depth and detail. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should never be the last word on it. We should be an invitation to people to want to have that conversation. And sometimes it might just be, you know, well, I heard this joke. I thought the joke was funny. And somebody said, I don't think the joke was funny at all. And then the conversation starts. Well, then that becomes the meat of what, you know, people should be living and basing themselves on. So again, even in that instance, even if it's, you know, disagreed upon, Mm -hmm. it's an invitation for the conversation. Yeah, Yeah. I love that. I think that's a great, like, example of how you can sort of, I love the idea of grounding, you know, comedy in something or, like, what you're making 
you know, connecting it to things, making it an invitation into, because yeah. that's something that I've, I found like, you know, last Wednesday listening, like I get that sense, you know, from the stuff you're making. It's like, and that's more rewarding to me. I think when you're like listening to somebody and you think there's more going on there, I'm not just like, you know, I'm not just here to laugh. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm here to laugh, but also like there's, there's some depth that it means something. I, I come away thinking like, Hey, I might've like learned you know about something here like that's that's <laughs> yeah. good that's a really good thing so i i think that's a great example yeah and i'll also say it's not always that it's not always that generous like mm-hmm. you know even like you were pointing as josh was pointing out like there's a lot of stuff in there that is really just for me that's me sorting out my own experience yeah, and that's yeah. you know uh, kind uh, of the inherent narcissism of any performer right yeah, like of course, we're kind yeah. of doing it for ourselves but mm-hmm. it's just our way of doing it and some people yeah. figure those things out through you know, being somebody that works hard, you know, in, at their job. Some people do it by being somebody that works hard at sports or whatever, but like mm-hmm. people that define themselves by what they accomplish, maybe that is how they find themselves. But as a performer, I'm, I'm going to lay out probably and, and just spend more time chewing over what my experience was. And so mm-hmm. there's a lot of it. There's a lot of my own stuff that is selfish in terms of, you know, it's just me figuring out my experience and trying to do it in a way that mm-hmm. is fun and relatable for me. And then hopefully is interesting to other people mm-hmm. um, and that other people might relate to, or at least learn something from. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with people. Like p- some people are like, yo, you shouldn't, you know, I don't know why you're posting pictures of your food or if you're, you know, <laughs> you just post pictures of your yada, yada. I mean, uh, the truth is, is like people can, they're just contributing to life, right? Yeah, like we're yeah, just contributing. Everybody's humans just do that. You know, yeah, you're just being, <laughs> you're just being human publicly. Mm-hmm. And, and that's also part of being human. So there's some of it that's out there just for me to experience my own self and people can take or do what they want, but it's just something mm-hmm. I want to do. And then also sometimes I'll make a video that is just dumb. And yeah. then I just think hey. it's funny and it's, it's just like <laughs> exactly. silly to me. It makes me giggle. But and, I, and, and, and so is, there's this all the, of it can be there. It's so important because if there's no emotional valence for you, that's going to come through in the performance too. If you're yeah. not in it, figuring it out, living it, it becomes dead words. And there's, there's something transmitted from a performer when things have kind of gone that route, you know, where yeah. it becomes rotes. I mean, the, the road comedian that's doing the same act for, 30 years. And I don't think that yeah. person really exists anymore because of the internet. <laughs> oh, uh, no, but, they do. Oh, they, they, no, they're, they're, they're still, they're they're out still there. around. They're yeah. Still like, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I mean, maybe, maybe that person gets something out of it as they're doing it. Uh, maybe it yeah. becomes like a, an old uh, standard song or something like this. But yeah. I, but I feel as an audience member who, you know, who watches a lot of comedy that when somebody is, you know, they're getting a little bit upset or they're getting you know and you can you can feel that kind of by watching them it's so it's so crucial i Mm -hmm. i want to ask you about emotion of the audience in terms of what is the most difficult thing that you talk about um where the audience almost doesn't know how to respond what are those those places where they they step back a bit or the silence that maybe you allow and that causes them to think sets them back and makes them uncomfortable. Yeah. I, um, I, I feel like, you know, there, there are still times and, you know, as I'm still figuring out myself as a, as a comedian and things, I think there are times when like, I'm still not quite at a point where I'm, I'm ready to like go to that, like full vulnerable place. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. just in the sense yeah. that I do think there's a certain level of like skill and tenure as a comedian that one needs to earn before they could just be like, you know what, let me go vulnerable <laughs> and deep on you for a second. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I we can't all just come out swinging like Dave Chappelle and what is it? Bird, uh, equanimity or whatever, yeah. or, or like Hannah Gadsby in the net. Like we can't just, show up and do that um you kind of have to earn certain things about that but i will say that like there are times when i will like break down a conversation uh like i have a joke about when i in a in a slew of jokes i have about being a teen parent and like what it was like Mm -hmm. to be a young parent and stuff i have this joke where i talk about i went back in time or i went not in time i went back to (laughs) my high school i went back in time why are we we need to talk about that (laughs) yeah loki starring yeah uh no so i had this joke about how i went back to my high school and was a keynote speaker and i talked to the kids and and they wanted to 
to just talk about my experience as a teen parent and yeah. somebody who came up and I talk and, and the, and I, I, I said a joke, but I was like, I just say, you know, I told them like life is hard mm-hmm. and, or I say, no, I say high school is hard, right? But life is harder and it is not going to get easier from here. Mm-hmm. And I break it down in a, in a really serious way. And you know, I think that for people like that's really true. And then when they've just heard me talk about like being a teen parent and they have to, and I don't go, I don't have a lot of like detail about what my experience was, but they're just imagining for themselves, like how difficult that must have been. You know, like being a young parent, me and my son's mom, like trying to figure out the world. I'm, we're, you know, we're both, um, people of color who had our kids young who right. didn't know what our, you know, we come from mixed and, and broken families. And so like, mm-hmm. you know, we've got a bunch of background to it and you can just see in the tone that I approach the audience with, like, I'm telling the kids like life is sucks, you know? And not mm-hmm. only am I talking about like how it was, things were probably they assume and mm-hmm. in some ways, sure, very hard for me coming up. Uh, but they see themselves in that, you know, mm-hmm. the audience that is, they imagine themselves telling high school kids, right. you know, like life is hard and life is difficult. And there's so many people that look back on high school as the greatest times in their lives. Yeah, yeah. Some people too much, <laughs> you know, some people yeah, too much look real. back on it. Mm-hmm. But there is a peace in remembering how simple and how less complicated and how few mistakes you had made because you had been around for so little time Mm -hmm. at that point in your life, you know? And so people feel that and they sense that and they imagine that. And then, uh, and I think that's a moment where I probably take the most time and I get the most patient, I get the most vulnerable only Mm -hmm. to then say, uh, and so I told him, you know, have kids now. (laughs) <laughs> just do it <laughs> just get yeah. it out of the way and so and so that's the twist and that's the escape of it yeah and and, uh. and so like that's just a probably the the best example i have of like where i start to break it down i pull the rug out from under it i don't yeah, all the way yes. go in because again i don't know that as a performer i'm uh comfortable or vulnerable enough to do that Doing yet that, yeah. um not that i couldn't i could but for me, again, like in this space, uh, I don't do that. You know, yeah, like I, I, I try to do a lot of different things. I did a story slam where, you know, it's just like a like, you know, you read a short story that you wrote. Yeah. And yeah. in that space, I started really funny and then I went very, very, very heavy and very, mm-hmm. very dark and, and things um, and wrote more vulnerably. But to me, that was more appropriate to do because it was. Uh, it was a story show. It wasn't just mm-hmm. stand up, yes. you know? And so in the stand up world, like I'm still trying to learn and earn my chops and qualify myself as a stand up. You sure. know what I mean? I'm yeah. still doing all of that. Still and so, work. Yeah. um, you know, maybe, it, maybe one day if I ever get the opportunity to really, uh, be on a really big stage, like, you know, like yeah. a big, a big, you know, a network or program and, you know, a Netflix or a, like, yeah, HBO, you Netflix, know, if I get, yeah, a, get yeah, do an hour or something, <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll be at a place where I'm breaking it down. But at this point, yeah. I'm still just a guy that's coming on stage to have fun. I want the audience Heck to yeah. have fun. Yes. And so I'm making my, my stage stuff fun. Yeah. Uh, but you know, in other contexts, when I'm doing other things, I'm probably more likely to try those things out. Yeah. I just, you know, as of right now, I, I kind of keep all my different projects separate. Separate. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if we could, uh, we could kind of end on the lighter stuff. Uh, yeah. Speaking we, of which, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. pulling that carpet out. You are, uh, you're, uh, you know, a famous uh, impressionist. <laughs> famous yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 10 followers on linkedin i yeah, hear which yeah, is yeah. pretty good pretty good yeah that's pretty good man so yeah. we're wondering if we could uh we can kind of end uh with uh you know a couple of impressions i just want to meet, meet a few people yeah. you know yeah um, uh okay i'll i'll try yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah surprise yeah. we're wondering if we could talk to the male podcaster <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You remember Mail Podcaster? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. Let me let me grab him real quick. Yeah, do you, yeah, yeah. Do we'll, you guys we'll have a topic a you want to talk about? Because he doesn't care. He's going to talk about what he wants to talk about. I think we should, think we should the, talk you, about uh, Elon Mike. Musk. Maybe. Oh yeah, Elon yeah. Musk. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah no. Yeah. He, he, here's the thing about Elon Musk. First, and, and let me just, let me just, let me just say, but like when it comes to Elon, no. All right, and here's why you're wrong. And actually, and you know what? Let me just. 
All right, devil's advocate, <laughs> real quick. Okay, devil's Elon advocate. Musk goes, and, and there's no reason why. If you take, mm-hmm. there's 10 different kinds of pills that you need to take today, all right? If you take those, you're going to, yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? No, you're right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you're, no, no. Thank, thank you're, you. You're right. thank well, you. I mean, I'm right, but yeah, yeah I'm sure. Like, in this sense, you can be kind of right. <laughs> And then lastly, can we ask uh, Will Smith about aliens? <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> Woo, you know, um... Is it's so hard because like during the pandemic, um, <laughs> you know they released oh, the videos of UFOs. For real though, they did that. <laughs> um, right, and now everybody's coming to me, and they're like, "So, I mean, was it all fake or was it real?" Tell us the and, truth, man. <laughs> I mean, I just you know, you know, like I hit them with the thing, cause it, you know, memory. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, thank you so yeah. much, man. That was thank freaking guys. amazing. Was awesome. Yeah, thanks. Cameron Logsdon, hey, everyone. Thank, thank you, you for very being much. with us. Thank you for having us. Is there anything you'd like to plug here at the end of the show? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You can find about where I'm performing um, and where I've got shows coming up. You can just check out my Instagram and my YouTube, just at Cameron Logsdon on on all the social media. So check it out. Find out where I'm going to be next and uh, listen to my mixtape. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spotify, Apple Spotify, Music. Apple under Music. Under Cameron Logsdon. Cameron Logsdon. Fantastic. Yeah, very yeah, good. For sure. Definitely oh. check that out, man. Thank you so much. And uh, first episode out. First yeah, episode. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs>